Hi, I'm Parker Wright with the Autodesk Simulation Team, and in this episode of Simulation TV, I'll be talking about Autodesk Simulation DFM. So let's start with a little bit of background. What are some of the challenges that plastic part designers and plastic injection molders face? Well, it's inherently a very complex manufacturing process, for one. Time to market is critical. We want to bring new products to market as quickly as we can, and so we want to integrate simulation into our design process. Part defects discovered in manufacturing cost a lot of time and money, so as we know, reworking molds can be very expensive. Production and shipping delays impact future innovation, so if we're busy solving existing problems, we can't focus on developing new products and new technology. There are thousands of material candidates out there now and more every day, so how do we figure out which one is the correct material for our application? And lastly, especially in larger companies today, geographically distributed development teams are very common. Okay, so how are we addressing this with simulation DFM? Well, it's real-time plastic simulation, so it gives you instant real-time feedback on manufacturability, cost, and the plastic material impact on the environment. So let's take a deeper look now with a live look at simulation DFM. Okay, so in the lower right corner is the technology itself. It's a plug-in for Inventor, Pro Engineer, and SolidWorks. So let's start by pulling up the fill preview. Now I know what you're thinking, that's nothing new, right? We've had fill preview results for decades now. So let's, let's look at something a little bit more complex. So we'll add a pattern of ribs to the part, and now this is where it starts to get more interesting. The plug-in recalculates instantaneously, and we can see the updated filling pattern. So that's something new. Okay, so think for a second about how this might change how simulation gets used. No longer is simulation an afterthought or a stop in the process, it's an integrated concurrent part of the design process. So now let's go ahead and switch to something a little bit more complex so we can show off the rest of the technology. Okay, now the first indicator down here is all about manufacturability and helping you answer the question, can I even mold this thing? So let's first take a look at wall thickness. It's one of the basic design rules, but also one of the most important decisions you have to make early in the design. Now an alert will show up if your part is too thick, too thin, or if there's just a lot of variance throughout the part. Or you can just pull up the wall thickness diagnostic plot anytime to take a look. Next up is undercuts. This time there's an alert saying there are areas of the part that will be difficult to eject without some kind of complex tooling, which is pretty much the definition of an undercut. Now all we have to do is click the alert and it brings up the diagnostic showing everywhere there's an undercut feature in the part. Now the last of the design rule checks is for draft angle. So again, there's an alert saying that there are a few surfaces that are not drafted properly. Nobody's perfect, right? When we click it, the diagnostic comes up and shows everywhere we forgot to draft. So this is really handy during the design process. Remember, we're showing all of this after the fact, but in real use, the plugin recalculates every time the design is modified. So as soon as you forget, make an error, violate a design rule, intentionally or unintentionally, you're gonna know about it. Okay, so the next thing we wanna talk about is weld lines. Now these are available because we're doing the real-time filling analysis. So the alert gives you the option to pull up the animation and the injection location toolbars. Now the best part about this is we can actually play with different gating configurations so that we get the best placement of the weld line. Very cool. Now also thanks to the fill preview, we can predict sink marks. Now the plot itself is nice, but to really understand how bad they are, let's use the finished part preview. Now with this, we can get a better idea of the location and the relative visibility of the sink marks of the part. And it also shows weld lines with little red dots. So all of this is very important information to have when aesthetics are your part are critical. Now the last thing for manufacturability that we have is you can actually see the injection pressure that's required to fill the part. And again, you can move this injection location around so you can play with different scenarios to see the effects that has on how much pressure is going to be required. And if all that wasn't enough, there's still two more indicators that we haven't even touched yet. Okay, so for cost, we have three factors. Mold cost is influenced by the overall size of the part as well as the complexity. So for example, the more undercut features it detects, the higher the cost is going to be. Now material cost is a relative indicator based on the material you've selected to mold this part out of. You can change the defaults if you want to in the iProperties dialog. And finally, the production cost is completely based on cycle time. And of course, the biggest factor usually in cycle time is the cooling time, no big surprise there. So things like making the part thinner will help us to reduce that cycle time and reduce that cost. Now the last indicator, certainly not the least, is the plastic material impact. So with this one, there's actually four factors at play. And the first of which is the carbon footprint. 
the carbon footprint does a calculation as to how many kilograms of CO2 are produced when you actually have to make the raw material needed to mold this part. And to show you how much impact that decision about what decision, uh, that decision about what material you use is going to have, let's go ahead and change this just for the sake of argument to polycarbonate. Now the result of this decision is an additional kilogram of CO2 for every single part you make. That's good information to know. Now the next one is embodied energy. And embodied energy calculates the amount of energy required to manufacture the part. Most of this is impacted by the material you selected. Recyclability is a relative indication as to how well this plastic, either as scrap or at the end of life, can be reprocessed into something useful again. And finally, embodied water calculates how much water is required to manufacture this part, similar to what we did with the energy calculation. A lot of this is due to the raw material production itself. So to wrap all this up, Autodesk Simulation DFM does a lot of cool stuff, but the fact that you can now do simulation completely in line with the design is a huge improvement to the overall workflow. And hopefully this will result in a lot higher quality parts and a lot less time in the design process. So thanks a lot uh, for your time, and I hope this was interesting and informative and, uh, and taught you more about Autodesk Simulation DFM. Thank you.